The tool of constraint optimization can also be applied to a production function. Let us see how we can do it. We have a production function and we want to maximize the production in this case. It is actually a Cobb Douglas production function because it conforms to the standard form of a Cobb Douglas production function. And the standard form is as follows. So you see that it is conforming to the standard form. However, we have a numerical situation which is more interpretable. So we will see what else we have. This is the budget constraint of the firm. So budget constraint is also available. And now we have the objective function as well as the constraint function. So um, definitely we can do the optimization by using the Lagrangian function. This is the Lagrangian function, the objective function, and this is the budget constraint, which is now multiplied with the Lagrangian multiplier. Now you know this process of finding the first order conditions simply by taking the derivatives with respect to the first, second independent variables and the Lagrangian multiplier. So this is a small DIY because you have been doing other applications before that I have shared with you. Uh, the last one was of the utility function, that how we maximize it. So after finding these three first order conditions, we can solve uh, the situation with the help of the first two first order conditions out of which we can take lambda on the left hand side and then we can equate them that is the first the second value from the first equation and the second equation then we can equate them and we get this uh, term and then we can solve it solving it will give us an equation which is in terms of labor and capital only and the lambda is now gotten rid of and this is the same procedure that we have been using in other videos where we did the optimization by using the constraint optimization process. Substituting in equation 3, now this value of the, from the equation number 4 can be substituted in equation number 3 where there was no lambda and there was only x uh, and y in this case which are represented with labor and capital. So the value of labor is substituted here and now we have the value of capital the critical value and this critical value can be used further to find the value of lambda the critical value of uh, sorry labor and for lambda you have to do it yourself because uh, you have the uh, values uh, you know both of them are going to give you the same result but you have two formulas by using which you can find the value of lambda so DIY you, you can do it yourself and see that what is the answer of it and you can also try to interpret it I have shared a video in which I have introduced the um, concept of uh, lambda's interpretation like region multiply and you can refer it from there and see that how we can interpret this now we have this isoquant um, and the budget constraint diagram which is showing the producers equilibrium and in this producer's equilibrium, you can see that we have labor on x-axis and we have capital on y-axis. Definitely we'll have the isoquants and uh, these are represented with IQ1, IQ2 and IQ4, uh, IQ3 and IQ4. And this is the point where the consumer equilibrium is taking place. So this is something we have studied in our microeconomic analysis and now we are going to find this certain value that is the maximum value that we can find using the critical values of labor and capital so these values are equal to this that is i substitute the value of labor and capital and i found that the answer of this expression is 380.8 which is the maximized output and the second order condition is the bordered Hessian condition that we have been using before just to do some rare cell we are going to do it these are the budget constraint based derivatives and these are based upon the objective function so uh, this is constraint based cal uh, calculation and this would be the objective based calculation you can pause the video and see that how these uh, budget constraint uh, based derivatives and the objective based derivatives are calculated now we can put these values in our 
bordered hessian here we have done it and once we put these values we get this expression that we can try to solve um, definitely in this process we will have to find the h2 and then h3 so we can solve this and we can see that how the results can be obtained uh, let me give you the hint for that and in that uh, if we solve the first uh, uh, the second principal minor that is h2 the answer would be uh, 5 into 5 that would be minus 25 so this is negative the final that is h3 uh, the principal minor the third one should be now um, with an alternative sign should be a positive value uh, so that when the alternative signs appear in the um, modern hashian determinant there would be maximization in this case it is the maximization of output so we have already found that h2 is negative and h2 should be positive so this is again DIY for you that you can do when you get stuck with these labors and capital symbols you can put the critical values of labor and capital that you have found in the uh, slides above that is these values 6 and 17.5 specifically we found them here these values you can put these values and once you do this you will get the um, numerical answer of the h3 that is the principal minor in which we might confront uh, the symbols of capital and labor so this is a small task and this is how we can try to maximize the output of a firm which is facing a constraint and we did it simply by using the um, the um, budget uh, the constraint optimization process thank you